Okay, welcome back everyone to Musical Mondays. I am so excited today to be interviewing an incredible Australian well-known musical theatre leading lady who I uh, see and I guess the world does as a triple threat. Um, I'm a huge fan of all the work that she does and she plays a special part in my heart because she played Miss Dorothy like I did. Can we please welcome to Musical Mondays, Miss Samantha Donamade. <laughs> Hi, Nikki. Hey, my love. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, as I said, I view you as a triple threat and someone who is highly talented at all three skills um, that we use in musical theatre. What do you? What did you do to hone these skills? Well, first of all, can we can we have interviews all the time because you make me feel amazing? Thank <laughs> you. Um, so I started off um, like most kids would be going to dance class and I, I actually wasn't a very strong dancer or singer. I was what I would classify as someone who enjoyed performing. Um, and then when I knew that this is something that I wanted to do and I had a really strong passion for it and I thought this is exactly what I need to do for the rest of my life, I took it a little bit more seriously and I um, really invested in uh, some more intense classes. So that wasn't until I was about... 16 or 17, um, where then I joined a full-time dance studio in, um, in Melbourne. And we did five days a week, you know, nine till four every day. And around that, so that was full-time dance. But then around that, I also took my own lessons. So I would go to other schools as well and get um, inspiration from other teachers. I'd go to my own singing lessons. I'd go to acting class outside of that. So it, it was a really... Um, full on schedule and I did that for three years uh, and yeah I made sure I had one to two singing lessons every day uh, every week and then made sure that I practiced a hell of a lot around that time as well because you can only get so much out of the the classes that you're attending but it's really important that you're then going home and analyzing and um, revising that in your own time so and to be honest once I finished full-time I then uh, started working for a year and I went away to Japan and I did a, a year contract at Universal Studios doing Wicked the musical there but then I actually came back and did another year of full time in a music theatre course um, uh, with Andrew Hallsworth and that again was honing in on my skills and that was a lot of hard work as well and since then even though I've been working I really try to get to as many classes and practice I practice singing every day um, I try to get to acting class and I have private coaches and things and of course those things aren't always accessible to everyone because some things cost money but there are a lot of things that you can do that don't involve you know having one-on-one -on -one lessons and you can practice your singing do your scales practice your audition songs or your performance songs every day you can read lots of books acting books you can learn monologues and scenes and you can put them down on self-tapes you can also practice your dancing by yourself. So, you know, there is a large variety of things you can do depending on your, um, your circumstances. Yeah, that's great advice. And I think there's a lot of resources now for, for young talent who can't afford to go to classes as well. So hopefully they're honing in and, and using that, but it's really, I guess, refreshing to see that even though you are so successful that you still continue to push your skills. Um, you know, you don't kind of set the bar and go, okay, I'm comfortable here. It's about getting higher and how do I get better and how do I push myself and get better and better? Absolutely. Well, you know, I think I love this quote that says, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. <laughs> um, and I used to wish that I was more talented than I was, you know, and I had this, I wish I had more of a natural ability. And I, I struggled with that for a long time being like, oh, I'm not as good as I wish I could be, or I'm not as good as I see other people being. Um, but everyone fights their own battle, you know, and, and I think I feel really lucky that maybe I have had to work really hard on my skills because it's taught me about hard work, everything that I have achieved with that work has come with a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. And I guess there's a real achievement out of that and a real a sense of, I did that, um, you know, from nothing. And, and yeah, and, and everyone has their own journey and I am not perfect. So I do need to practice every day. And I, you know, I still do performances and I still do um, things that I go, oh, that auditions, I go, that wasn't great. That wasn't my best. I could have done better or, you know, and I, I think that it's important for especially students to realise that no one is perfect. You know, it might appear sometimes that they are and, and you might look at someone else's situation and go, 
wow, they have it all. It just happens easy for them. But I think, as I said, everyone's fighting a battle, whether it is in life or in their performance skills that you know nothing about. Very true. You seem to go from job to job, show to show. Uh, I guess most performers in our industry have big breaks sometimes between uh, roles and looking for work. What do you think has led to such success for you to, in order to do that? Well, at the beginning of my career, I definitely had quite a few breaks. And, um, you know, especially I didn't do a lot of long running shows. I did a few small ones. So it meant that maybe I did a show every year. But then there's quite a few months there that I wasn't working and spending everything, all my savings that I just earned. Um, and now I have been lucky that I have somehow consecutively managed to land a job. And, and I also know that that will stop because that's, the reality of our industry is that you're not right for everything. There was a couple of years back um, uh, after I had just done Singing in the Rain, um, the Australian tour, and then we went to Japan. And when I got back, I couldn't get a job. I auditioned for about, I don't, I don't even know, maybe 10 to 20 musicals. And and to the fact that I was even getting cut in the first round, and I thought, I, I can't believe this. I've done all this work. I've, you know... Um, done this many shows however many that was I don't understand what's happening but I think our careers um just like our skills ebb and flow so sometimes we're really strong and we're at our peak and we're what is needed in the industry and then other times you know there was a hot there was a real bunch of time there that um there were a lot of like pop influence shows casting and I'm not really a pop singer so I was trying my best to imitate that and and try and broaden my skills but I wasn't really what they were looking for. And that, and that was a hard um, thing to go through. But then when I had the realisation is that you're just not going to be right for everything and it, it's nothing personal. And in fact, what it did is made me realise that if that was something I wanted to do, work consecutively, maybe I needed to be more versatile in what I was studying and what I was working on. You know, I would always say, oh, I'm not a pop singer, I'm not a pop singer. And so I thought, well, maybe I need to find a happy medium of you know, working on that at least. So if this happens again, then I at least am prepared. Is getting a good reputation behind the scenes, like with directors and the crew, just as important as getting a good reputation in the public eye? Well, everyone wants to work with people that are nice, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, it's a hard thing that we do. Our industry is full of insecurities. And, um, you know, I always before anything else, before having success, I always try to be the nicest person I can be, to be compassionate and understanding and kind. Um, and of course, that gets hard when you get insecure or you, not hard, but you know, that, that can, when you're in high pressure situations, mm -hmm. people sometimes don't act at their finest. And, and I think that's all very forgivable as well. People can see through that. But I think the most important thing is to prioritise being the best person you can be rather over the best performer you can be always, I think. Mm -hmm. And because I think reputation does, you know, you, you want people to walk away from working with you. And, and personally, I don't want them to say, wow, she was the best dancer. Or, wow, she was the best singer. I want them to be like, wow, she was really nice to work with. And um, yeah, I think that's what we can just try to uh, aim for. And I think it gives us that longevity in the industry too, because, you know, even when you're up there, it doesn't necessarily mean that you won't have downs and you need those people to support you as well and, and know you throughout your journey. So that's something that I've certainly been aware of, um, I guess, being a younger child star and, and trying to transition to an adult that, um, you know, I still see people at auditions and things that I kind of grew up with. So um, I'm so glad that I, I did have that respect for them as, as in what they were doing. Um, I, I guess the one thing I respect and you doing as well, sorry oh no go ahead sorry oh I was just going to say and you know what like our industry is hard enough for us not to support each other mm -hmm. so I think um that's exactly what you said it's so important because we're already battling trying to get jobs and and, mm -hmm. and within our own demons and our own things that we tell ourselves so no need to pull other people down and to you know because they're believe me they're probably doing that for themselves so <laughs> Absolutely. And, and I, as I was saying, I really respect what you've done as a performer because you seem to be happy to obviously play lead roles, but also to co-star in, in, um, in other parts and being an ensemble in other roles. So I know some people in the industry, once they get a, a major lead role, um, that they wouldn't go back to playing a smaller role. But I, I, I've seen your journey and your career where you're happy to take on those roles because I think I, I'm assuming it, it 
defines you as a different kind of artist and you enjoy the music and you enjoy the job. Um, is, is that is that why? I think everyone's different. I think there's a bit of stigma um, to the people that, like, we call them the people that won't go backwards or, you know. Yeah. And I think there's nothing wrong with that as well because mm. some people find... I think foremost when you're taking a job or when you're auditioning for something, you have to enjoy it. So if, if you didn't enjoy dancing in an ensemble, it's not so much about thinking, I don't think that people think they're higher than that or better than that. Absolutely not. I think they're saying what will fulfill me the most. Um, and whenever I'm looking at doing a job, it's a long time that you do a job for it and you have to do it eight times a week. Um, you know, it becomes, you, you want to be passionate about it because I think that passion will wear thin sometimes when you're sore or when you're uh, not feeling well or when you're having a hard time at home and you have to go to work. So you want to be really passionate about that. So I, I guess for me, is I really love working and I love the environment. I love the people I work with and, and I learn something different I don't think any job is better than the other because we couldn't, you couldn't do a musical with just a, a lead role and you couldn't do a musical with just an ensemble and you couldn't do a musical without the stage manager and, and the, the mix and everyone involved. So I think that for me, I learn something from every experience that I do. For instance, I've um, been in the ensemble lots and I look at my peers in the ensemble and think that they are incredible you know they don't get the final bow they don't get a lot of the acclaim but they work so hard and they, they put their bodies under a lot of um, stress and, and they deliver I've, I don't think I've been in a show where I don't think that I've looked at people and going you are delivering every single performance um, and then um, I've understudied quite a lot and I think I love doing that because I learn so much from the other understudies who I think are you know geniuses at what they do and also the people that I get to understudy I Again, I haven't once understudied and not learnt something from that person. So valuable. So valuable watching. And every single person I've understudied in my career, I've really idolised and thought they were amazing. And every one of them has been really different. And I hope one day if I have, or when I have, or if I have understudies, that they'll learn things from me. Maybe they might go, I don't want to do it like that. Or maybe they'll learn something good or something bad. I don't know. But... Um, I really love understudying the, and it's a lot of work. So maybe <laughs> right now I feel like I need a little break because I just came off doing Chicago where I was understudying it. And it is a lot of pressure. It's a lot of, you put a lot of pressure on yourself. You don't get rehearsed as much. Um, so I'm a little bit like, maybe I just need a breather from that and just concentrate on one, you know, whether it be, um, you know, one role or one ensemble track for a little bit just to have, but then maybe you get bored and you go, oh, no, I want to understudy or I want the challenge to play a role. And that comes with its other complications when you're playing a role as well. You know, you, there is a lot of pressure and, um, and it's a different kind of pressure. And, you know, the spotlight is on you. So on those days where you are not feeling so well, it, it probably or uh, more tired, you feel that a little bit more um, exaggerated because there is that spotlight on you. And, um, but again, I feel like everyone contributes to a show equally and um, I've been in some really amazing shows where the leaders of our company either come from the top the producers or the, the the leads have really made everyone feel like they're equally as important in the piece and I think that's really important to remember. Yeah so obviously the coronavirus has devastated a lot of industries in the world and especially here in Australia and our musical theatre industry but hopefully it's only for the time being it's not we're gone it's just a matter of kind of flattening the curve and doing the right thing um, we had uh, you know a whole lot of people coming to see you in nine to five because we absolutely think you're an incredible musical theatre uh, performer but you've also taught a lot of our students as well through our musical theatre development programs and, and we adore you um, how uh, as unfortunate as it is that it's postponed, how, how were you guys as cast members told that the show was going to be um, postponed for the time being? Well, gosh, I've, uh, it's, well, <laughs> I'm a little bit speechless when it comes to what's happened. And at first it didn't seem as serious. It just seemed like it was affecting our industry and, you know, it may be postponed. So we were meant to start rehearsals in a week, I think, when everything started getting bigger. And instantly I knew that, to be honest, I felt personally that our job was the least of my worries at that time, you know. Um, 
And of, of course, I, what I was most concerned about was the industry as a whole mm-hmm. and how that would affect future shows. And, and, and of course, finances is one thing. You know, a lot of people were relying on being paid and, and hopefully, and it's great the government is recognising how many people are out of work. So that, that, that's solving that problem to a degree. But, you know, I really felt for our producers, they didn't know what was happening. How could they potentially, you know, we, we kept saying, well, we'll see what will happen because every day, every hour, things were changing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it went from, you know, we can't have more than 500 people in a venue, then 100 people, then, you know, who knows, it might be two in a couple of days. You can't have more than two people in the same spot. So I really felt dreadfully sorry because they probably felt like they had a responsibility for all these people that they were employing but they had no control in this so um yeah I think that when I was told that you know that I think I was more concerned about the broader um environment of our industry and and how that was going to affect people and I was so lucky that I had a job that you know, potentially I will have a job in the future and I have some kind of shining light to go to. But I also understand there are a lot of people that were counting on a lot of auditions and more so than working and finance, it's having a goal. You know, I they um they were talking about the Olympics a couple of days ago and saying that the Olympians need to know whether it's going to happen or not because they can't keep training along these lines. They can't keep training for something that they don't know if it's going to happen. And we always need that goal, that little intimate goal or that longer set goal or the really far goal to work towards. And, and that's where I really felt that But people have really band together and said, you know, I can offer this, let's do this, let's put this on, let's do, you know, interviews and things to inspire people. So I think that, I think it's also really important to use this time to rest because I think as performers, we're always going and always reaching for the next goal or next hurdle so for me I'm kind of like I'm going to give myself just some time to do things like I bought a coloring book I don't think I've colored since I was a kid and that's really fun you know or to do some cooking and baking and spend time with my partner but also then once we give ourselves a little bit of that to keep moving on and and that's where I feel um, really sorry for um, our industry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's it's the land of the unknown and, and how long it's going to go on for. We can't see that end, but I hope it's there and, and we're all doing the right thing, staying home and finding, I guess, ways to connect with people we might not always get to connect with because we're so busy. So hopefully we Absolutely. can inspire some kids. Um, okay, it's speed question time. So what we do here is all you have to do is say the first thing that comes to your mind as quickly as you can and you'll be versing other Australian music musical theatre stars um all right so it's just the first thing that comes to your mind i'm just going to set the timer oh, i'm on. terrible at these oh, i was shocking i had to do it too so <laughs> I, I was like i was not prepared when it was thrown on me either so i i hear you a hundred percent all right they're not too hard i promise here we go favorite musical <laughs> <laughs> told you I'm so bad. Um, uh, uh, favorite musical at the moment, nine to five. Perfect. Favorite character you have played? Uh, Violet. Best co-star kiss. <laughs> Toto. He used to kiss me all the time. Yes. Uh, one word you would use to describe Corona. Devastating. What would you do if you were not a performer? Maybe be a police officer. Favourite musical theatre performer? There are so many. Um, uh, uh, Sutton Foster. A quirky thing about you uh, that you do that people might not know. <laughs> a lot of house cleaning thing you do most while stuck inside house cleaning <laughs> or coloring that's it that's it so one minute 18 <laughs> so it wasn't too bad it wasn't too bad <laughs> oh i don't know that that was quite oh. difficult oh. well thank you so much samantha for being a part of musical mondays um this is all about inspiring kids that are at home in isolation doing the right thing to i guess 
not give up on their goals? You know, what's something that you could say or give them some inspiration just to things to look forward to or ways to kind of push their journey forward as a performer while they're at home? I think setting little goals is a really great thing. I think we can become really overwhelmed. I injured myself a few years ago and had to have a year off performing and dancing. And I was really overwhelmed at the beginning. I couldn't really walk. I couldn't do any exercise. So I found myself just doing nothing for ages. And then I set myself little goals every day. Just And that, they don't have to be huge ones. They might have been like sing for 20 minutes, um, do some yoga for 20 minutes, you know, just little things. And every day I would just tick them off and say, oh, I did that that day. And if I didn't do them, that was fine. But if I did do them, I feel like I accomplished something and achieved something. So I think little goals and also be really kind to yourself. And um, there's so many great ways that you can be inspired. And it might you might not feel like doing anything. So why don't you put on an old musical DVD, you know? I'm sure there are a lot of old school musicals from the 40s, 50s, 60s that a lot of um, us haven't seen yet or haven't watched for many years. So pop them on and be re-inspired. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Samantha. Bye. Bye.